In this video, I'm going to create a robot head. I'm going to use the revolve command. I'm also going to use a few different commands that I have not used to this point. It's very important when we begin our sketch for our robot head that we position all of our parts where we would like them to be in their final position. Moving a part once it has been created is extremely difficult and inadvisable. So, when creating your parts, make sure they are where you want them to be. I'm going to select my front plane, and I'm going to also, on my view queue, select my front plane. So orthographically, I'm looking right at the front of my robot. With the front plane selected, we'll press the sketch button and our front plane will now be where we are sketching. I'll begin by creating an axis starting at my origin. I'm going to go straight up. Notice that below my cursor and to the right we see a little vertical line that's just letting us know that we are kind of snapped orthographically. Um, we get a random value. I wouldn't like a random value I'd like it to be specific so I'm gonna to go to my dimension tool I'm gonna to click and release on my line and drag my cursor off to the right and then click and release again I think I'll start with a line that is five units tall this is a good beginning for an axis for our robot head if you choose to create a robot head that begins with a cylinder most likely in your top plane I would create a circle and then extrude that up. But to create a revolve, we're needing to use our front plane. I'm going to go to the point command and I'm going to place a point directly at the top of my axis. You'll notice a little round circle appear. I'm going to hover on that point and drag my cursor a bit to the left. Notice a little dashed line appears. That means we are orthographically in line, horizontally in line with that top point. And I will place another spline point. We're going to use a spline eventually, which is a curve tool to put a curve through this point and this point. The width of the head will be down here. I'd like to come up about halfway and put a, another spline point. Come up again, and we can find where this corner is, and then maybe just track in very slightly. We've now created one, two, three, four, five points. So let's go to our spline tool. I'm going to click once. Click again, click again, click, and then to end our spline, we'll double click. I think I can adjust this point by dragging it. I like that. And then I might take this point and drag that out ever so slightly. I do believe that our sketch is going to need one last line. So I'm going to select my sketch, right click, and go to edit. I go back to my straight line tool, click at this endpoint, and bring it over to our axis. Notice that when we kind of close our curve, this area is highlighted blue. I'm going to hit the check mark. I'm going to select sketch one. And I'm, going, I'm going to find the revolve command. The sketch one was selected, so therefore the area of the sketch to revolve is already selected. We do need to select the revolve axis box and then select our vertical line for our revolve axis. It gives us a preview of what our revolve will look like. 
and when we're satisfied, we'll hit the check mark. If I go back to isometric, we'll see that we have kind of our revolve shape. Let's go back to the front. And what I'll do next is select my front plane, and I'm going to click Sketch. I'm going to go to my line tool. I'm going to find this center axis and click and bring a line over and left click. I'm going to dimension this line, change it to 0.65, and I will click on the other end. I will go to my line command, go to the other end and bring this out and click. Go to my dimension tool and dimension that to 0.65 as well. This is only going to be used to place the eyes that I'm trying to make. I'll now select a circle and change my dimension of the circle, clicking on it. The diameter is 0.84, let's change that to 0.85. And I will go to another circle tool drag this up and we will dimension this one as well 0.85 once we're finished we can hit our check mark inside of our circle we can kind of see inside of our revolved head we can kind of see those circles let's go back and change this to isometric we will select Sketch 2, and I'm going to extrude these. We want to add, and let's bring this out a bit more. As I extrude these circles out, you can see that at a certain point they intersect the face, and then we are kind of dragging these out. a clean value of 2. That looks good. I think what I'll do next is sketch on this plane. Go to our front viewport. Our sketch plane will be the face of this extrude. Notice that as we hover on the perimeter and then bring our cursor to the center, we do get a snap point. Let's dimension this to a value of 0.6. We might have to do this eye separately. We'll hit the check mark, rotate this ever so slightly, select sketch 3, do an extrude, let's do a remove, and let's do 0.25, that extruded our eye in a little bit, creating a small pocket, we'll select this face, go to sketch, select our circle, find that center point, dimension this we go to 0.6 select our sketch extrude remove 0.5 and we removed a little bit more material I think at this point I might chamfer this edge and this edge Point one. I might try a bit of a smaller value. Point 
0.05. So we removed a little bit of material inside there. selecting our front plane and selecting the front plane I think I will create a mouth at this point we'll sketch on our front plane create a center point rectangle and start this center point and bring that out values I'm not too concerned with my values Sketch 5, we will extrude this. Bring this out a bit, and we will hit the check mark. I think I will fill it. fill it looks like on uh, this edge. Entities to fill it. It's a little aggressive. 0.35 looks good. And with these edges we will continue to Finish, we can hit the check mark. I'll select this face and create another sketch. In order to find the midpoint, we can kind of touch off on this midpoint, touch off on that midpoint, and they should track together, and that will allow us to kind of create this uh, shape as well. When we're finished with our sketch, we will hit the check mark, select our sketch, and we can do an extrude cut. 0.15. fillets in here. Point one. And we'll hit the check mark. Symmetric view, and we will hide the front plane and the right plane. And here's the beginnings of a robot head.